So I've, I've, I've heard this story before, but I know it to be a story of, that made a strong impression on me and how, about how God is at work when times are tough and uses sometimes our suffering to bless others. That's a theme we've been working on. Well, you know, sometimes looking along and sometimes you think, oh, this is too good to be true. It's just so smooth. Well, in 2003, most of you know that Jim was out of the blue diagnosed with a benign brain tumor. Well, that certainly got our attention. And um, we, went to Sh we went to Shans and he had surgery and they thought everything was just fine. And five years later, it wasn't just fine. There was still more tumor. So he had a second brain surgery and then we thought everything was fine. And five years after that, um, he needed her surgery. And then another year after that, he needed the fourth surgery. So, yeah, so he's had four brain surgeries, and we have the most wonderful neurosurgeon up at Shands who, even though you only see him once a year, he never forgot us, and he kept researching and researching, and finally after the fourth brain surgery, he said, I can't keep going into your head again without causing some problems. And so he suggested that we stay up there for a month and Jim would have radiation, even though this was a benign tumor. He had done research and found that they were having success, having success with this because there's a capsule that kept filling up and they can't take the capsule out. So we said, okay, here we go. So we, he suggested that we stay at Hope Lodge, which is a, a facility provided by the American Cancer Society free of charge and he said if it were me that's what I would do so we took that as a good sign so on July the 5th 2014 we went up to spend a month at Hope Lodge well we moved in on Sunday and on Monday we met everyone and as I would tell Michael in many many emails it was a cast of characters we were living with. <laughs> These were people from all walks of life. We were very different from these people, people because they were all very, very sick, and we weren't. They all had very life-threatening diseases. There were some with bone marrow transplants, and we were okay. And I mean, as okay as you can be with what's mm -hmm. going on with us, relatively speaking. So, you know, we kind of sat back and we didn't know how to approach all this. And they told us that Wednesday night was the big night at Hope Lodge. It was a potluck dinner. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, these people were very, very sick. And I know it sounds bad, I didn't want to eat the food. <laughs> and so I said to Jim, I don't really want to do that. So the first week, we went out to dinner on Wednesday night. And then we spent the rest of the week, we really got to, got to start knowing these people. And this cast of characters became very important to us. Um, so the next Wednesday night, I said, okay, we'll do the potluck dinner. But I was still a little leery about eating all this food, so I said, I'll make something we like and we'll just eat that. Well, then we looked at everything and it looked pretty good. And the more we got to know these people, the more we liked them. And so it turned out that the whole month we were up there, the Wednesday night dinners became very important to us and we all just had a great time eating to her. Um, I guess there were individual kitchens so everybody could cook their own meals. And so we really kind of let ourselves become immersed in this and it actually became a missional opportunity. We would go, a lot of these people, a lot of these people came from out of town like we did, but they didn't have cars. So we would have to they had a van that would take people over to the Radiation Oncology Center. And they would sit out on the porch in rocking chairs waiting for the van to pick them up. And when we were going, we, 
Anybody want to ride? So he became the taxi driver to the Radiation Oncology Center. It just, we became, we, we're still in contact with two of the couples that we met there. We've lost one of the people that we were close to, close to. But there was one little couple that came, and they were actually from Coco, and it was Joe and Loretta, the sweetest little African-American couple you'd ever want to meet. Loretta was this tiny little wisp of a person who had been diagnosed with advanced lung cancer, and Joe was her caregiver there, and he was so worried about her because Loretta wouldn't eat. So we were fortunate enough, we came home every weekend, and every weekend I would make her a pot of homemade chicken soup and take it back to her. And Joe was just, and Joe was just so appreciative of that. And it, you know, when I look back on it and I think God planted us there for a reason, not only to fix Jim, which it has, but Never did I think I would step out of my comfort zone to do what I did there. And Jim becoming the taxi driver, and it, I think we became so blessed by this opportunity. And it was something that we never envisioned, but we were put there for a reason. And it really, I think it reached both of us 